Hello friends, you're with a lonesome gamer and let's start this game of Arkham Horror now. The first thing we have to do is um, after setup, well actually it's, it's still a part of the setup, we have to draw a Mythos card, a first Mythos card and uh, I'm gonna roll now if I draw from the um, from the big pile where well uh, the main part of the mythos card um, can be found or from this small pile which is from the king in yellow expansion on a one to four I draw from the big pile so that's a one okay and that says mudslides and uh, this is from the from the uh, Miskatonic expansion, and um, these Mythos cards are resolved from uh, from the bottom to the top. It's a bit strange, but uh, it works like this actually. And here, on the left lower left corner you see in this case two location normally it's only one location but in this case it's two locations that's a kind of a special card and uh, if the upper location would not be into play then a gate would open in the lower location but uh, the Watley farm is in Dunwich so there opens a gate in the Watley farm now and uh, again I got two piles of gates and a roll again from which pile I draw this is a standard standard gate it's the abyss and now I place the gate here on the location this token a clue token goes away and in addition I draw a random monster which I play uh, on the gate which I place on the gate okay that's a pretty tough start it's a Chthonian and I'll explain later how the monsters work the good thing is this thing doesn't move um, Furthermore, we have to place a, a Doom token here on the Doom track. We place it here on number one. And remember, if this Doom track is filled, then the Ancient One awakens. And then there is this uh, special rule. When a new gate opens, roll two dice. If doubles are rolled, immediately draw and resolve a Mythos card. So, um, yeah, I guess what happens now, first we roll and, oh god, well that's a start, doubles. Okay, so I'm not absolutely sure um, if we now have to resolve the other Mythos card first or that one uh, I think I'm it says immediately so I think I'm gonna uh, try the other one and this is from the King in Yellow pile and that's a bad start again the next act begins so um, Uh, we have down here, these are the monsters that moves. In this case, no uh, gate opens, there is no gate symbol. And um, every monster has a symbol. Like this here, in the lower right corner. In this case, it's this triangle. And uh, now you look here, if there is that symbol here on this... Uh, 
card and it is and some symbols are on a white ground some on a black ground and you can see here um, these arrows here black white and some are both and if a monster is on um, on a location it moves in the direction uh, that the uh, the arrow shows which has the appropriate color here so if it would be a white color it would be this way if it's here if it's a black color it would move this way if it's here the Chthonian is a special monster actually it doesn't move it says instead of moving roll a die on a four to six all investigators in Arkham lose one stamina okay so let's see let's do this that's a four so we all lose one stamina that's a real bad start I mean this is it's not even the first turn and we're already losing stamina okay and now it says the next act begins the terror level is increased by one however no gate is opened this turn okay so now what happens is this terror level goes up and whenever a terror level goes up you have to discard an ally because um, people are leaving the city they got frightened um, and if you come on uh, one of these special marked um, spaces here then uh, the shops in the city will close first this is the the, uh, the general store this is the curiosity shop and that is here the old magic shop so uh, yeah that's definitely a bad thing and as I said if it goes to 10 and uh, a certain number of monsters is in Arkham then the great old one will awake okay and then the next act of the charity performance of the king in yellow has begun the first player must put the top card of the act deck into play the first player gains one clue token well at least something okay so I'm allowed to take a clue token here she's the first player and then we have here the overture and it says this card starts in play next to the act deck oh so actually I think this card starts from the beginning I see that now okay immediately after an environment mystic mythos card is drawn during the mythos phase the first player must put the act one card in play setting it on top of this card this card remains in play unless another act card is play on top of this one okay so yeah we were pretty unlucky here that it was that fast so now it's the next act and that says now when this card enters play the investigators may immediately add one doom token to the doom track to return this card to the top of the act deck and the investigators do not do so this card remains in play unless another act card is in play on top of this one while this card is in play immediately after an environment mythos card is drawn during the mythos phase the first player must put the act 2 card in play setting it on top of this card okay um, I think I'm not gonna do this I'm gonna add another doom token um, the problem is here that this guy needs only 11 doom tokens which is not very much still I'm gonna do this I'm gonna place a second doom token here uh, to prevent the first act from starting 
Okay. And now, finally, we can start with resolving this first um, this first uh, mythos card. Remember, um, after gate opened, we had to roll two dice because of this special ability of the great old one. Then we had to um, we had to resolve this card because the two dice were doubles, and now we have to resolve this card. First, let's see if the monsters move. Well, there is just this one monster here in play, and the triangle is not here on the card, so that shouldn't happen. Then we have some clues appearing. This is the seventh house on the left, or Devil's Hopyard, or Witch House. So, um, in this case, it's, I don't know if I'm, I'm allowed to choose one, actually, but it seems to me, so, so I think I'm, hmm, okay, maybe I can check this. Okay, I checked this and it says actually that you have to um, place the clue token in the first possible location and this will be the Devil's Hopyard in this case. So that's here in Dunwich. <clears throat> and then we got an environment card. Environment card stays in play. Uh, until another environment card enters play. During the mythos phase, each player whose investigator is in a street area must roll a die. If the result is a 1, the investigator must move to the street area that is reached by the following the white arrow from his current street area. By following the white arrow from his current street area. And the white arrow leads to a vortex or an area with a gate, the investigator stays in his current street area instead. Okay, I see. <clears throat> so, we have to remember that. Okay, that was just the first Mythos card. And that was a terrible start, no doubt. We didn't even start the game. The terror track went already up one space. We all lose, lost one, um, one stamina and we had to place two doom tokens. So thank you very much. That was really, really bad. Okay, so uh, my plan for the first turn is um, she, Minty Pan, she is uh, trying to do this uh, genealogy research. So she starts going to the library, then the graveyard and the historical society. So he start, she starts with the library. And then these three other guys, they all meet at the newspaper. That gives them, for once, a chance to, um, to gain a retainer. And uh, they, can, uh, they can exchange items. I guess I will give Daryl Simmons the rifle. And I think I'll give... I'm not absolutely sure. Maybe... Um, maybe Carolyn Fern. She might get the, the Storm of Spirits or so. I'm not absolutely sure about that. But uh, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, maybe I'll do this. Okay. And then um, it's Daryl Simmons. And because of the retainer, he gains $2. And you, um, in the first uh, turn after you get a retainer card, you don't have to roll for it. So he simply gains two dollars. Otherwise he'd had to roll and on a one he had to discard this card. Okay. So let's see now. She's the starting player. 
she's got speed 5. And then she's got here movement phase exhaust to get one extra movement point. So she's got a speed of 6 and uh, she's going to move here to the library. That would take 1, 2, 3 movement points and uh, she can actually spend two movement points and read this tome, the king in yellow. And she can... Uh, now I see the problem, yeah. She can make a law check. If you pass, gain four clue tokens, lose one sanity and discard this card. If you fail, nothing happens. So she tries to... Before we start that turn, she tries to um, change that value here from luck to lore. So she has now three lore and just one luck. And this focus number here, that shows you how, um, how much you can change your, how many steps you can change your, your values. You could she has a focus number of two. So she could change either two of these values for one step or she could change one step, one value for two. So that's what she did. She changed these values here and one, two steps. Okay. And normally you got to do this in the upkeep phase. That's the first phase of a turn. Everybody has to do this. But uh, to be honest, um, sometimes in a solo play I forget this and then sometimes I do it a little later. But I think that's okay. So now we have the movement phase of the turn and every character will do his movement now. So she starts, one, two, three. And then in this movement phase she uses, she does the law check, minus two, so that means her law value is 3. And minus 2 is 1, so she is allowed to take one die. And for a success of the test, you need a 5 or a 6. So let's hope for the best here. And uh, that's a 2. So she wasn't successful, but it doesn't matter. And now she's in the library. That was her movement phase. And then it's... Let me see, this is for other world locations. Yeah, yeah. And then it's Carolyn Fern. And she's got a speed of 3. But then she's got that speed skill. So she's got a speed of 4. And she simply moves here. 1, 2, 3. She moves to the newspaper. Daryl Simmons stays simply where he is. And then it's Dexter Drake. He's got a speed of 5. And that's just enough to move from down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Also to the newspaper. So here we are. And that was the movement phase. And now it's the third phase. It's the Arkham encounter phase. So every character that is on a location in Arkham or Dunwich, so not the characters in the other worlds, or the characters on the street, only the ones that are in these round locations, they now have an encounter at that location. And that simply means they draw one of these cards and resolve them. Um, again, I roll if I draw from this base game or here from the special encounters um, of uh, the King in Yellow. Okay, so it's Minty Pan in the library. It's this card and it says, the book seems to be on every shelf you turn to examine. Finally, Seeing no other option, you take it with you. You are cursed and take the first tome from the unique item deck. Well, that's not so good. Okay, so 
First of all, we have to do, we have to take one of these curse cards here. That says, when rolling dice, you only score successes on a six. If you are blessed, okay, she's not. So normally you can score successes on a five or six, when you're cursed only on a six. During the upkeep phase, roll a die and discard this card on a one. Okay. And then we can look for the first tome card. Let's see what that is. Uh. Oh, come on. Here we go. Okay, it says Nameless Cults. Exhaust and spend one movement point to make a lore minus one check. If you pass, draw one spell, lose one sanity and discard Nameless Cults. If you fail, nothing happens. Well, okay. She might give this also to another one because she's not so good in magic. But now she can place a clue token here on the genealogy research because she had an encounter in the library. Okay, and then it's Karen Fern <clears throat> and she had to draw from the from the King in Yellow deck. And that says newspaper. Good thing you had that camera with you earlier. You may spend three toughness worth of monster trophies to gain two clue tokens. Okay, that doesn't help because she doesn't have any monster trophies right now. Um, anyway, they could now exchange items. Uh, let me see actually. Um, I have to think about this. Well, I think first of all, this guy will take the rifle. And he's got some other stuff here. The golden trumpet. I think that one goes here to Dexter Drake. And this way she, he can uh, spend... He won't lose that much sanity if he uses magic. Uh, she could heal herself because she's a, she's a psychologist so I think it's pretty helpful for him. <clears throat> then we got these tomes here. So I guess um, yeah I'm not absolutely sure. I guess we give one to Dexter Drake and that one I give that to I give this livre divan to Carolyn Fern. Okay. And I think I even give the crystal of the elder things also to this guy here to Dexter Drake and then <laughs> see there's a lot to do and then I think I give the storm of spirits oh, although I'm not so sure about that actually yes I think I'll take the storm of spirits and give that to her so she also has a combat spell and he's got that shriveling combat spell. Okay, so... Yeah. Um, and then it's Daryl Simmons and he can draw actually two... Um, he can draw two encounter cards because of his special hometown advantage uh, ability.
Okay, the first one would be uh, Editor Doyle Jeffries offers you a retainer in return for your fascinating stories. Take a retainer card. <clears throat> okay, the thing is now he already has a retainer card. But, on the other hand, he's got this I'll vouch for my friend. And I'm wondering... Anytime you or your partner gains a bank loan retainer, I wonder if he could gain now a retainer card, but I don't think so because, well, you can't gain a second retainer, so I guess, uh, yeah, that's not helpful for him. The other one would be uh, pass a luck minus one check. To find an article that a local citizen told you would shed light on the recent strange activities. Gain one clue token. Okay, I think that's what he does. He's got four luck. So now he can use three dice, luck minus one, and he needs a five or six to be successful. Oh, and he didn't make it. That was bad. Okay. So no luck this time. And then in the end Dexter Drake has his encounter. And uh, another rule is that the, uh, the encounter cards go back in the pile and they are shuffled new. And actually I have again this card, Editor Doyle's Jeffries offers you a retainer in return for your fascinating stories. Take a retainer card. So I was lucky here and Dexter Drake now gains a retainer. So now we had first the upkeep phase, then the movement phase, the Arkham encounter phase, and then we have the other world encounter phase. And that means that every uh, investigator in another world would have his encounter now, but there is none, so there are no encounters. And finally, we have the last phase of a turn, and that is the mythos phase. And that's now when the next mythos card is drawn, and that is this card here, but... That's a card from the Kingspot expansion. And I'm not going to use that card. Uh, I'm drawing until I draw one card from the, uh, from the base game or from the Dunwich expansion. So that is from the Arkham Horror expansion and that says base game uh, from the Miskatonic expansion but it has this symbol here, which is the base game symbol, so we can use this one. And that says um, Marsh Refinery or the Unnameable. Uh, in this case, the Marsh Refinery is not in the game, so a gate opens at the Unnameable. And that is here. And I wrote a 5, so in this case, it's one of these special gates here. This is one of the gates from the Lurker of the Threshold. And it leads to the City of the Great Race. And it has that special symbol here. So I gotta check what that means. Okay, this is a monstrous gate. And that means if you fail to check, uh, if you fail the check to close this gate, a monster would appear. Um, but right now the normal monster appears and let's see this is a well I'm not sure by a key I guess uh, okay so we simply place that here and that is a flying monster. And then we, are, we have to roll two dice. 
for the special ability of Tsar because a gate opened. And this time no doubles are rolled. <clears throat> but we have to place another doom token here. Oh my god, we already have three. This, this goes fast actually. And then we have some movement. First of all here this uh, triangle moves. So this would be this monster again. And that means on a 4 to 6 we all lose a stamina. And that was a 2, so we were lucky here. And then no other monster moves because this monster here has a circle. And then it says startling message sent from overseas. Place two clue tokens on the newspaper. If the King Spot Horror Expansion Game Boy is in play, that's not the case. So we can place two clue tokens on the newspaper. And uh, that's pretty interesting because now, um, well, we are at the newspaper actually, three of us. So I guess simply that uh, we can somehow give the two new, these two clue tokens to one of these persons. I'm not absolutely sure to whom. Okay, I think Carol and Fern gains these two clue tokens. And then that was the Mythos phase, and we now give the first player marker, which is this one, to the next character. Okay, I'm done with the upkeep phase. Nothing, nothing important happened here. And it's now Carol and Fern. And I decided to move with her. One, two, three, four to the science building. And uh, maybe she can make it in the next turn to yell magic shop where she might buy some more spells because she's very good in magic. She, Yeah, and she's got some money, so maybe that's a good idea. And then it's Daryl Simmons. And... Well, he moves to the curiosity shop, actually. And tries to buy some some magical weapon there, maybe if you find some would be fine. And then he will move to Dunwich and try to fight uh, monsters that might appear over there. Dexter Drake, he moves to the graveyard. That's one, two, three, four. And uh, he's going to meet there. Uh, oh, he can take a clue token, by the way. And he's going to meet there with Min T. Pan. And she's got to go to the graveyard for her genealogy research. So she moves one, two, three, four. She moves here. And uh, then she can give the king in yellow the tome and the red sign of Shudmel. She could give that both to him. <laughs> okay, he's got a lot of stuff now, but I think that's it's still useful. Because uh, he's got these good uh, law values which you need to understand the the secrets of the king in yellow. And, uh, yeah, okay. And then we come to the encounter phase. And we start again with Carol and Fern in the science center. Okay, and this is Carol and Fern in the science building. A chemical brew bubbles on a nearby Bunsen burner. It smells delicious. If you drink, 
If you drink it, make a luck plus zero check. If you pass, the strange liquid fortifies you. Roll a die and gain that many points. Split between your stamina and sanity however you like. If you fail, the liquid turns out to be coffee. Gain one stamina. Okay, so there is nothing to lose. And uh, yeah, I just need a luck test. I got luck two. And I got a six. That's good. So now, I'm not sure, I mean, the point is I got a maximum sanity of six and maximum stamina of four. So I think I'm only allowed to take one stamina point and that's it. And then it's him in the curiosity shop. And uh, there is a special thing here. He can go shopping here. So that means he can draw three items, unique items, and he has to buy one of these items. So let's hope for a weapon. Well, that looks interesting at least. Oh my god, this is an elder sign. Oh, this is painful. Okay, Elder Signs are amazing. When sealing a gate, lose one stamina and one sanity and return this card to the box. You do not need to make a skill check or spend any clue tokens to seal the gate. In addition, remove one Doom token from the Ancient One's Doom track. Well, I'm afraid this is a must-buy. Especially if this guy has only 11 uh, on his Doom track. That's bad, because we lose the Ancient Spear, so that would be a fantastic weapon. Ah, that's so painful. But I got to buy the Elder Sign. I got no choice here. This is just too strong. Uh, yeah, I simply have to do this. Okay, so I buy that. And the others the other two uh, items are discarded. And then it's Dexter Drake here at the graveyard. Just want to show you also these locations. They look also just fantastic. And uh, yeah, he draws a card. And here we are, the graveyard. An artist has set up his canvas and is preparing to paint. The focus of his piece appears to be an open grave. He remarks that he dislikes its emptiness and asks if you can provide anything to fill the scene. If you spend five toughness worth of monster trophies, he introduces himself as Richard Upton Pickman. Okay, well we don't have any monster trophies, so we can't do this but at least nothing bad happens. <clears throat> okay, and then it's uh, Minty and it says testifying Coot of Falwell latches onto you and rambles on about his spiritual beliefs. Make a law minus one check. If you pass, then somewhere in Kuta's words you find a clue to the mythos threat. If you fail, move through the street while you listen to Kuta ramble on about pure nonsense. Okay, let's hope we can do this. Uh, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure we can't. It, it's a law. Well, maybe there's a chance. We have a law value of three. So we have two. But we are cursed. So we need a six to succeed. Ah, we didn't make it. That was bad luck. If we were if we weren't cursed, we would have we would have gotten another Q token. But anyway, uh, nothing bad happens, and uh, yeah, we're now on the street. So that means we go here to the River Town streets. Okay, um, yeah, and that was our second. Um, 
our second uh, goal of the research mission. So we only have to go to the historical society to to complete this task. Okay, it's the mythos phase now, so let's draw a mythos card. That's one of the normal ones. And a gate opens at the independent square. So that's up here. Let's see what kind of gate this is. That's also a normal gate. So it's this one which leads also to the city of the great race. And then again we have to roll two dice. And no doubles. But another Doom token down here. And let's see now for movement. Well, we have here uh, this rectangular and this symbol here, and then we have a circle here. And that means now that this monster here is moving. And that is a flying monster. And the flying monster means um, if it's somewhere on the board and it starts moving, um, it would go to uh, the adjacent location if there is an investigator and attack this guy. But because there is no investigator here, it goes instead to the sky, which is right here. So we place it here now, and if it would be activated the next time, then it would go somewhere on the streets, either of Arkham or of Dunwich, if there is an investigator somewhere on the streets and attack him. Otherwise it would stay in the sky. Okay, and I forgot to draw a monster for this. Well, let's see. You are seeing something, I'm not. And... Oh, that's a bad one, I'm afraid. This is a crawling one. Looks pretty ugly. Okay, and this is also moving because it's, uh, it's also activated here. And it's placed here. And it moves here now, because it has a black background, it's symbol here, the circle has a back, black background, and here we have this arrow, uh, this arrow, which is black and white, so it means it always moves here. Okay. And then we have a clue appearing at the unnameable. But because there is a gate, no clue appears there. And now we have a strange plague, environment, mystic. Investigators cannot gain stamina except by receiving medical care in St. Mary's Hospital or from Vincent Lee. Well, that's not good. But the real bad thing is it's in a mystic environment. And now... This overture says, immediately after an environment mystic mythos card is drawn during the mythos phase, the first player must put the act one card in play, setting it on top of this card. Okay. Well, that's bad. And now, we could add one doom token to the doom track. But I can't do this. I have already four Doom Tokens and I'm just at the second turn. So, uh, no, it's simply not possible to do this. Um, so this card will, play, will stay in play now and it says, while this card is in play, immediately after an environment, Urban Mythos card is drawn during the Mythos phase, 
The first player must put the Act 2 card in play, setting it on top of this card. Okay. Remember, Act 3 means game over. So, I don't know, somehow I've got the feeling we're doing pretty bad here. It would be sad if this game is, would, would be really such a, such a disaster. But okay, can't change it. Um, so yeah, that was that was now the mythos phase, and uh, I'm gonna give the starting player sign. Oops, to Daryl Simmons, and I'm gonna load this up now. Yeah, well, as I said, it doesn't look good at all. Four Doom Tokens after two terms, uh, two turns. I think that's that's pretty ridiculous. Normally this doesn't happen. Uh, Terra Track did move and uh, we were pretty unlucky until now, I guess. But uh, let's hope for the best. Sometimes strange things can happen in this game. So I hope to see you in my next video. Until then, bye.